What's going on guys, Corey from Yoda Expedition here. We have a third gen Tundra in the shop and we are going to be transforming this to this. So in order to get this job done, we're going to be swapping out the SR5 grill for a TRD Pro one. And then we are going to be adding an 18 inch light bar from Dial Dynamics. So to do that, we have the bracket here from Dial Dynamics. It's going to mount directly to our new grill and make the install super easy. We have four different light bars here on the table, uh, two different colors, amber and white, and two different lenses, driving and combo. For this particular install, we're going to be doing amber and the combo lens. And then we also have the uh, wiring harness here from Dial Dynamics. It's going to be a pretty easy install, so let's go ahead and get into it. So step one of this install is going to be getting the front bumper off the Tundra. We did this a little while ago. I have some clips to show you how to do that, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is pop the hood, and we'll take out those bolts along the top. So you can see on the top of the grill, we have four brackets that are going to the front of the truck. They each have a 10 millimeter bolt. We're going to go ahead and take those out. We got those four bolts removed. Now on either side of the grill, there's gonna be some plugs. The passenger side's gonna have two, the driver side's gonna have one. We're gonna go ahead and get those unplugged. All right, now right below where those plugs were, there's gonna be a push clip. So I'm gonna use a trim removal tool. I'm gonna to pop both of those out. Now moving over to the wheel well, we're gonna have four bolts on this side in front and four bolts on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and remove those with a 10 millimeter socket. All right, so we got the four bolts removed on either side in the fender well. Now we're gonna go ahead to the bottom of the front bumper. There's gonna be four bolts down there to remove. Depending on your model, there might be eight. If there is, I'll show you where those additional bolts are. Okay, so on the bottom of the front bumper, you're gonna see these brackets coming off. You're gonna have four of these along the, uh, the bottom of the front bumper. So those are the four bolts that we're gonna be removing. Now, if you have eight bolts, the two additional bolts on either side are gonna be right here on the bottom of the bumper cover. All right, now looking through the middle of the grill, you can see two brackets in there. They're, uh, both brackets are held in with two bolts each. So from the top, we're gonna go ahead and remove those four bolts. They're also 10 millimeters. So at this point, we've unbolted everything that we need to on the bumper. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull the clips out on the front fender flares that we removed earlier, and then we can go ahead and uh, remove the bumper. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab the fender flare, get your fingers underneath it and pull out and work your way up slowly. We ended up removing the first four clips on the fender flare. That way we have enough room to pull the bumper out. All right, now that we have the fender flares popped out from the side of the bumper, we're gonna go ahead in the same location and we're gonna pop the clips out on the bumper that go around the bottom of the headlight. So we're gonna reach in, grab the bumper cover, and we're going to start pulling that out. Work your fingers along the edge and get it all disconnected. So at this point, the bumper is ready to come off. Now, right here inside of these little grills, there's little clips that are holding the bumper on yet, but once you lift up and pull it out, it'll come right off.
Got the bumper off. In the process of taking it off, just make sure the edges here on this don't get caught on the headlight or anything. Uh, we thought it was still connected, but it was just uh, getting stuck on this. All right, so with the bumper off, we have it up on a stand here. We have a blanket under it just to protect the finish, the paint, and everything like that. We're gonna go ahead and take off the active arrow. So there's a plug right here on the very front. We're gonna go ahead and take that off. And then we're gonna have some 10 millimeter bolts around the outside uh, perimeter. We're gonna take those out and pull this whole thing out. So with the active arrow removed, you can now see your TSS sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug that. And then there's also um, two 10 millimeter bolts holding that in. And we also have a Phillips head screw. We got the TSS sensor out. Also, if your Tundra has the front camera, you're gonna go ahead and unplug that and uh, take the screws out for the camera. This one doesn't have a front camera, so we're not gonna be doing that. Where you took the TSS sensor off, there's gonna be two nuts that slide in. We're gonna have to transfer these over to our new grill. There's also another six that hold on the active arrow. If you wanna take those out, we are gonna be flipping the grill uh, over and you don't wanna be losing these. So if you wanna take them out, now's the time to do so. Now we have some Phillips head screws we need to remove on the sides of the grill. We're gonna have three over here, three over here, and then along the top of the grill, we're gonna have six. So let's go ahead and get those out. So with those screws out, we're gonna go ahead now and um, we have 10 clips that we're gonna remove that's holding the uh, front upper part of the grill in. So we're gonna use a trim prying tool to press down on the uh, prong on the clip and then we can go ahead and get all of those taken out. Two. All right, so as you can see, we just removed the upper piece of the grill. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove these pieces here, one on either side. And then after that, we're gonna be removing uh, this front piece here. So for those lower side pieces, there's gonna be seven clips. You can see we have one right here. So just pull back on this lightly, and then you can pull down and you'll uh, see it'll start to pop out. So just go around and do all of those. So with those two side pieces off, we're gonna go ahead now and we're going to flip the bumper over so that we can get this piece off here. I'm gonna use that trim prying tool. I'm gonna to go in here and pry up on this, work my way across the front, come over here, do the same thing. So with that front piece off, we're gonna go ahead and flip the grill over once more. Now we are ready to go ahead and undo all the clips that are holding the grill in place.
So around the perimeter of the whole grill, you're gonna have a total of 18 clips. We're gonna go ahead and remove those just like we did for the upper piece. So you're just gonna depress here and then we'll push all of those down, work your way all the way around. You might have them pop back out on you. Once you get a couple free, they should stay out. So you're going to need to take off the cover here on your grill for your TSS sensor. So on the back side there's just two tabs. So we got the SR5 grill out of there and we took the TSS cover off as well. We're going to be transferring that over to our new TRD Pro grill. So let's go ahead, we'll get that in and then we'll get the new grill. Uh, secured into the bumper. All right, we got the new grill snapped in place. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna flip this back over. We're gonna get this bottom piece reinstalled. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the side pieces here. Just line it up. Flip it in, pretty simple. Same thing with the top piece. Go ahead, line that up. Clip it all in. All right, now we can flip it back over put those screws in to hold in these, the bottom pieces and the top piece. And then we can go ahead and install the TSS sensor. And we can go ahead and reinstall the TSS sensor, slide the nuts into the new grill. Put that in place. Get this tightened down. So at this point, if you have a camera, go ahead and install it on your new grill. Like I said earlier, this Tundra does not have a front camera, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that part. If you're not installing a light bar, your TRD Pro grill swap is complete. You can go ahead and reinstall the bumper on your Tundra. Uh, but now we're gonna go ahead and get the bracket and light bar installed on here for the Diode Dynamics light bar. Right here we have the bracket from Diode Dynamics for their 18 inch light bar. So we're gonna go ahead and get that installed on the back side of the grill. So we went to go install the bracket here. And in order to get all of the uh, holes like lined up centered, this little nub right here, we're gonna cut that off because how it is right now, I don't even know if we'd be able to get that screw started. So we're gonna trim that off. That's gonna allow us to move the bracket over and center everything up. If we leave it like this, the light bar would be a little off center in the grill and we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and install these screws. They are a T25 Torx and I don't have a Torx screwdriver, so I'm gonna use a socket and a ratchet. So just uh, be careful with how tight you make them. It is going into plastic, so you don't wanna strip anything out. All right, we got the bracket installed. Next, we're ready to install the light bar. So 
From Diode, you're gonna get a bag of hardware. Inside that bag, there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and take both of those out. That's all we're gonna need from this bag. And this is gonna hold the light bar to the bracket. So we'll go ahead and get the light bar put into position and we'll get these bolts started. So we're just gonna position the light bar all the way forward and just make it level with the bumper. Light bar is mounted. Now we can go ahead and route the plug, uh, probably down alongside the bracket like so. And then you can either zip tie the wire right there, or if you want, you can cut out this section on the bottom and then you could feed the plug through and run this underneath to hold it in place and then you can zip tie it that way. And then um, we'll go ahead and get the bumper. Actually, no, we have to reinstall the active arrow first, then we can get the bumper back on. So we got the nuts here for the active arrow. Go ahead and reinstall all of these. So you got three on the bottom and you got three on the top. So we'll go ahead and we'll bolt that back in and then we'll plug it in as well. So we got the active aero reinstalled onto the front bumper. Now we are ready to go ahead and get the bumper put back onto the truck. But before we do that, we're also going to route the wiring just so it's a little bit easier and we have plenty of room up front here to see what we're doing. So I have some older clips from me routing the light bar uh, down here on the lower front bumper. It's gonna be the same exact steps, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So we have everything kind of roughly ran out where we want it. Uh, we have a bunch of extra wiring here that we're gonna have to zip tie up and get it out of our way. We have the relay over here. There is a threaded hole on the side of the fender well. We're gonna be using that to mount the relay. We have our positive and negative here to go to the battery, and then we have the wire that's gonna be running over to the driver's side. We're gonna be putting through a hole on the firewall so that we can run to our switch. I think what I'm gonna be doing is popping off the windshield cowling. I'm gonna be tucking the wire underneath there so where it runs across the engine bay, you're not gonna be seeing it. So we're gonna start with taking the cowling off. There's a clip here on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out first. Now along the bottom side, there's gonna be clips, which you are just gonna be pushing back towards the firewall and pull up on the cowling. Just work your way along from one side to the other, and then you'll be able to get enough room to tuck the wire inside. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the harness with the switch. I'm gonna feed this through and I'm gonna go underneath this wiring here. Again, with this wire here, I'm go ahead and tuck it underneath. So we got the wire ran through the cowling. Now on the firewall next to the brake booster, there is a little rubber plug. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. And that's where we're gonna be running our wiring through. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, plug off of the wiring harness. And uh, that way we can fit this through there. So just reach in there and grab it. It'll come out fairly easily. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put some tape on the end of the wiring harness so that all of these plugs aren't trying to get caught on everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this up. And then when I put it through that hole, I'm just gonna try to get it to go straight down towards the main wiring harness. And then when you're inside the truck, um, there's a section of the padding that you can move out of the way. And then you should be able to see where this wire is coming through.
Now that we have the wiring pulled through to the interior, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cowl back down in place. So to get this paneling off, we're just gonna grab here next to the steering column. We're gonna pull it towards us and the plastic should pop out just like so. I'm gonna work my way along the edge and carefully pull it all out like so. And now if we want, we can pull off this side piece as well. That'll give us some more access to behind that area. All right, so some of these switches, they push out by just pushing on the back of the switch. Some of them are a little bit more difficult. So like these dummy switches that we were trying to get out, there's little um, clips on either side. So I pushed on one side with my finger and the other side I used a tiny flathead screwdriver. And by pushing both of them at the same time and pushing out, I was able to get it to come out. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that and install our new switch. Also, both of the dummy switches down there, they had plugs with wires going into them. Not quite sure what they are for, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and let them chill back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the wiring harness and tuck it up through. Very easy, bring it through here. Now we can go ahead and wire our new switch on. So we got our OEM style switch here and we ended up putting some male connectors on this. Uh, this is gonna come with no connectors. So it depends on what you wanna do. You can just hardwire it right to this harness. You can cut these off. Um, but the, the wiring harness for the light bar is gonna come with female connectors. So if you put some male connectors on here, you can just hook it right up. So we'll go ahead and get our new plug put in place. Should just snap right in. And then we'll go ahead and plug this in. Now we can go ahead and hook up our wiring. All right, so to go over the wiring real quickly, we have the black and white wire crimped together on the back side of the switch. These are both gonna be your grounds for the illumination on the switch, and that is going to be hooking up to the black wire on the light bar harness. Next up, we have the red wire on the switch. This is going to be power into the switch. This is gonna be hooking up to the white wire on our light bar harness. Now we have our green wire on the switch. This is going to be our power out, which is gonna be running to the relay on the wiring harness. That's gonna be plugging into the blue wire on the harness. Lastly, we have the yellow wire. This is going to be the power for the illumination on your switch. So the plug that was plugged into that dummy switch, the, the wires that are running to it, have power. So you can just tap into that and then you're not worrying about ruining any of the uh, wiring that is actually being used by one of your switches. So if you look at that plug that was plugged into the dummy switch, you can see there is a beige wire here all the way at the end. You're gonna get a wire tap and tap into that wire and then hook that up to your yellow and you'll be good to go. So we went ahead and checked everything, making sure that the wiretap was making the right connection that we needed and the illumination on the switch was working. So at this point, we are good to go and put all of our interior panels back on. All right, so the last thing we need to do is mount our relay and hook up the main power and ground to our battery. The hole that we're gonna be using to mount the relay is an M8 uh, thread. The hole on the relay is not big enough for that, so we're gonna go ahead and just drill this hole out a little bit so that we can mount this to that particular uh, location. All right, we got the relay mounted up. Last thing we need to do is just hook up the positive and negative onto our battery. And then I'll go ahead and clean up the extra wiring that we have here and tuck it out of our way. So I ended up putting the positive wire underneath the main wire. 
because when I put it on top, it wasn't allowing the cover to fit. So I'm gonna try it like this. See if this clips on, we're good. So we got our two switches right here. We have the one on the left, which is for our light bar that we are installing right now. And then the one on the right is for the light bar that we previously had installed. So both switches and harnesses are wired exactly the same. So with the wiring done, we are now ready to reinstall the front bumper. Um, in our case, since we have to do a bunch of photography, we're gonna have to be swapping out a bunch of different light bars and taking new photos. We're gonna install the bumper with the active arrow off. Um, obviously you would not be doing this, but in our case, we are gonna do that. So I'm gonna take the active arrow back off and then we can go ahead and get the bumper reinstalled. So this thing is a little difficult to put on and off by yourself. If you have an extra person, it wouldn't hurt to grab them, but let's go ahead and get this on. So to help you get this bumper installed, right underneath the headlight, there's a little hook. And then on the backside of this vent, there's a hole where the hook goes in. And once you have it slid onto that, it helps hold the bumper up in place so that you can get everything aligned. It definitely makes it a lot easier. All right guys, that's gonna finish up this install with the TRD Pro Grill and the 18 inch light bar from Dial Dynamics. Now we have this paired up with the six inch fog lights from Dial Dynamics and also the other 18 inch light bar that we have down there. We have install videos for all three of those and it's all available at yodaexpedition.com. If you have any questions about any of those installs, you can ask us down below in the comments. And if you wanna head over to yodaexpedition.com, you can click the link in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.